welcome to CES 2026. I'm Danny J, and I'm here with Anthony Lee, Vice President of Marketing at Macronics America. Welcome. Yeah, thanks, Danny. Appreciate it. Yes, um, Macronics has long been recognized as a pioneer in non volatile memory solutions, powering everything from consumer electronics to advanced industrial applications. As the industry faces new demands from AI acceleration to next generation storage architectures, Macronix continues to play a pivotal role in defining what's possible. Now, if you're like me, where you might not think about memory chips when you're scrolling on your phone or hopping in your car, but here's the thing, without companies like Macronix, none of that technology would work. They make non-volatile memory that powers everything from your smartphone to industrial applications. So today we're gonna to talk about where the technology is headed, especially as AI is changing everything. So Anthony, thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you. That's, that's a very good intro. Yeah, <laughs> no, exactly, perfect. So thanks for joining us at CES. To set the stage, the memory industry is evolving rapidly with new demands and innovations. So let's start with the big picture. Um, the memory industry is evolving so fast. What are the trends that you're seeing that are really gonna shape the next few years? Yeah, um, good question. Um, I think, uh, AI for sure is driving demand, right? Uh, the memory, what we call the memory wall, which is there's a big wall that AI needs to get over in terms of performance. So that's the biggest thing. So you look at all the big guys, the Samsungs, the Microns, um, they're chasing the same thing, same with us, um, trying to get parts that are faster, larger, by right? being able to do things that's necessary to make AI um, easier uh, access not just on the data center side, but also in the homes, which we call, you know, edge AI. So for sure, I think there's a lot of innovation that, and the demand is there. So everyone's really chasing uh, that, uh, that performance level. Yeah. yeah. So speaking of innovation, when I know Macronix is expected to chart more territory. So when you're sitting in strategy meetings at Macronix, what does your product roadmap actually look like for the next five years? What are you building toward? Yeah, um, earlier as you were speaking to Min, uh, he spoke about um, some new technologies that we're developing. The first one is actually 3D NOR. Uh, I think 3D NOR will be a game changer for not just us, but also the rest of the industry. So clearly, if you look at NAND, NAND's had 3D structure for decades. Uh, right now, 3D NOR is needed for uh, applications like automotive, medical, right, IoT. So that's where we're kind of moving towards from a technology standpoint. And the good thing about Micronix, I'll tell you, is we invest a lot of money in our own R&D. So if you look at patents and stuff that uh, we put out there, a lot of innovation, right? So uh, I would say in the next five years, you're gonna see a lot of stuff coming out from Micronix. Yeah. So you kind of mentioned um, a few markets already. The roadmap is only impactful as the markets it serves. So you mentioned autom automotive. Uh, who are the key players using it? Like what markets are you focusing on? Yeah, um, and, and as you stated prior to this, uh, uh, memory goes into everything, right? So, you know, you got the PC industry, the, uh, um, the consumer market, which pretty standard uh, typical products, but when you go into automotive, that's where the quality uh, goes in. That's where men, our uh, CEO and chairman, his passion is about quality. So he talked about going from uh, parts per million in terms of quality to parts per billion. Okay, so innovation itself is not just about coming out with faster and bigger products, but also much higher quality products for uh, automotive. So if you look at ATIS applications, um, that's you know where a lot of our memories are starting to get go into, right? but it's it's not just the car itself that, that you know uh, the server that that sends data to the car, right? So we're also on the uh, on the server side as well. Right? Yeah. So just across the board. So we have products that are what we call edge device uh, products, right? Because if you think about it, cars, are kind of like an edge device. So would you say your biggest market is your automotive or are you also in medical? Are you also in? Yeah, so we're pretty diversified. If you look at where we are, we're about, you know, uh, a quarter in automotive, a quarter in industrial, a quarter into data center server, and then the rest is like consumer, et cetera. Our biggest growth is actually um, medical. So if you look at um, home medical, 
um, you know, that is booming. Uh, I think the longevity, longevity, the health aspect of it, sensors on the edge, I think that's where AI is really needed and where I think our memory fits very well. Because uh, if you look at a lot of these medical devices, people wearing it like patches and stuff. So like, for example, GCM, we're very big in that glucose monitoring systems, right? Uh, and they need very low power, right? So that's another innovation that we came out with a few years ago that fits very well within uh, medical devices. It's very, very low power. So interesting. So, well, a lot of new technologies are exciting and we love the innovation. Some established solutions uh, continue to prove their relevance. So EMMC has been around for a while now, but it's not going anywhere. So why is that and what makes it still so relevant? Yeah, um, uh, slight correction. I, EMMC is still growing uh, as much as people think. Uh, I think the industry is about $12 billion this year. Um, and I think it's going to grow like a category of something like uh, 4% percent over the next uh, five years. So I think this industry is still moving uh, and growing. And for Micronix, it's such a great industry, uh, great product to come out with uh, because we're servicing an industry where a lot of the big players have decided to kind of move on. But the customers still need these products, right? Without these products, you can't ship TVs, you can't ship um, you know, modems, you know, etc. cetera, uh, and also automotive. Uh, so the Again, going back to automotive, EMMC is actually the fastest memory product within automotive in the next few years as well. Right? So I think for us, we service an industry that a lot of players have exited and we have a lot of customers really scrambling right now finding uh, suppliers like us, not just, you know, just standard products, but products that, can, um, that have longevity and really good quality. I love that you guys aren't chasing the shiny objects like everyone else is doing. You're solid. And, you know, even speaking with Min, he's been around for 37 years, I believe you said. Yeah. So yeah. I love that. Yeah. And, and that's the way our, um, our company is really set up is to service company, I mean, customers long term. Right. And they, they love coming to us. They tell us what they need. Right. And, um, and we're able to really go out there and, and help them. Right. Good luck. So finally, AI, and you mentioned this already, but has become a defining force across all the industries. So we can't go into 2026 without talking about it. Yeah. Um, how is Macronix actually addressing what AI needs for memory? Because I imagine it's putting some serious demands on what you're making. Yeah, clearly um, AI, I think on a yearly basis, is just continuing to transform. All right? uh, our consumption is one of the biggest issues. Uh, I think if you look at a lot of the, uh, the players out there, the biggest concern is how do you deal with the massive power consumption that's being drawn by AI, right? So we, you know, we're doing our part. We are developing products that are not just faster and larger, but also lower power right, to meet these demands. Um, and not only that, we're looking at innovations that um, are not traditional, okay? Uh, and those innovations have to do with being able to get out the, the memory um, speed much faster than what we see right now, right? So again, I would say in the next uh, few years, you'll see a lot of innovations from us in that aspect to address the AI, the AI uh, needs, right? Can you expand a little bit more on what you mean by non-traditional? Yeah, so if you look at uh, NOR itself, um, you know, uh, a lot of things are like standard spy interface, right? Like it's either um, a single um, I.O., dual I.O., quad I.O. We're seeing things going up to like even by 16, right? 16 I.O.s. To me, that doesn't address the need in the next five years. So we have to come out with an interface that is much faster, right, to be able to hit um, Edge, edge devices. So one of the key um, markets or applications that's real, you'll probably see this year uh, that's kind of driving is these AI glasses. Right? Everyone's developing one, right? Um, but the big issue this past couple of years is the power consumption. Um, I mean, you can only wear it for a few hours. Not only that, the device is still very heavy. 
So we're looking to work with a lot of um, innovators on how to make it lighter, faster, and, uh, and you know, more comfortable to wear uh, in the long term. Right? So a lot of innovation that I think uh, AI glasses is something I think we're, everyone's kind of chasing. Yeah, those are so fun. Do you own any? I don't own any. It's it, uh, For me, it's not there yet, yeah. right? I mean, to be able to buy a $600 pair of glasses right now, and you can only wear it for like one or two hours. Uh, we're, we're, but I would say in about a couple of years, I think that innovation uh, it will be a game changer. Yeah, for sure. Well, Anthony, this has been so helpful. I think a lot of people can realize that memory chips powering our devices are sophisticated or they're, that there's this much innovation happening behind the scenes. So thanks for breaking it down for us. Thanks to Macronix for being one of those foundational companies that makes it all possible. To everyone at CES, this is the kind of conversation that reminds us that innovation isn't just about flashy stuff on stage. It's about the components, the infrastructure, and the companies like Macronix that enable everything else. So thanks again, Anthony. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Appreciate it.